All right, so that first part was just about how you can turn any rational function into a polynomial plus a kind of proper rational function, meaning the polynomial on top has lower degree than the polynomial on the bottom. <laughs> now, to tell you about the main technique we're learning, partial fractions, let me let me first talk about the rational functions that we already know how to, how to integrate. Uh, so, for example, we already know how to integrate polynomials. Every polynomial is a rational function, sort of in a dumb way, because a polynomial divided by 1 counts as a rational function. We also know how to integrate things like 1 over x plus 3, because this is just natural log of x plus 3 plus c. And we also know how to integrate 1 over x squared plus 1, because this is tangent inverse of x plus c. So here are sort of three types of, of rational functions that we know how to integrate. Um, we know lots of variations of these. You can sort of change the numbers around. You can replace 1 with any positive number, and we still know how to do it. <laughs> On the other hand, here is a rational function that we don't know how to integrate. And the reason we don't know how to integrate it, I guess, is because the bottom is sort of more complicated than we know how to deal with. Um, if you were clever, you could probably come up with some way. But the way we're going to learn is called partial fractions. And so the first step is to factor the bottom. So let me do that down here. This factors pretty nicely into x plus 2 times x plus 1. So the thing we started with is x minus 1 divided by x plus 2 times x plus 1. And now what we're going to do is sort of strange. We're going to guess that this can be written in a really nice way. We're going to guess that we can write it as a number over the first factor plus a number over the second factor. <laughs> and, well, the reason such a guess might work is because when you combine these things, if you get a common denominator and add up the top, you get something that seems pretty general. You should be able to get anything you want on top just by choosing A and B appropriately. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to try and see what A and B have to be in order for this to be true. So I'll do just what I said. Get a common denominator, multiply the top and bottom by x plus 1, and multiply the top and bottom by x plus 2. So what we have is x plus 2 times x plus 1 on the bottom. So now, combining the top, uh, combining the terms, the coefficient of x, we get a plus b times x plus a plus 2b divided by x plus 2 times x plus 1. And so in order for this to be true, what we need is that the coefficient of x here is the same as the coefficient of x here, and the constant term is the same as the constant term there. So that just means a plus b equals 1, and a plus 2b is negative 1. <laughs> so this is these are two equations that we have to solve. If we can solve these, then we can turn this into something nice, and we'll be able to integrate it, as you'll see. So to solve this, I'll just solve the first one for a by subtracting b to the other side. 
and plugging this into the second equation you get 1 minus b plus 2b equals minus 1 uh, I'll subtract the 1 to the other side and combine these to get b equals negative 2 and going back to here we get a equals 1 minus negative 2 or just 3 and so that's pretty nice, it solves it. A has to be 3 and B has to be negative 2. So this says the thing we started with is equal to 3 divided by x plus 2 minus 2 over x plus 1. And this is good because now we can integrate all of this. So uh, both of these integrals are those natural log type integrals. Look at 3 times natural log of x plus 2 minus 2 times natural log of x plus 1 plus c. And we could simplify this a little bit further if we wanted to, but this is nice enough.